When do we start? We just did. You know, I, when I was doing the press for Avengers 2, I, or sorry, Avengers, <laughs> that's to come, I uh, was first talking to Kevin Feige from Marvel about, you know, why these characters would end up in the same, you know, franchise, because uh, they, on the page, they don't really have any reason to be together. They don't, they're colleagues, they don't have a particularly deep friendship, um, and they, you know, when we first see them, they don't, either they're just sort of working hand in hand, it's been a couple of years since Avengers. They, you know, they probably, you know, accomplished, you know, several missions and, you know, that's kind of all they know of one another. They're not, again, they're not really deep friends. And uh, it wasn't until you started to kind of scratch away at the surface of the relationship between, or sorry, the similarities um, between these characters that you understood how they could end up together. I mean, they're both characters that have sort of been um, kind of guns for hire and sort of unquestioning, um, you know, the kind of, uh, who, who the, the purpose of, you know, the, the, the tasks that they've been, um, assigned to, um, they, they're, they're heroes, um, sort of as a, by proxy, I guess. And it's not until they, uh, you know, everything is the sort of wool is pulled, away from their eyes and they're sort of, um, you know, um, kind of in a situation where they realize that they haven't really been um, making active choices for themselves, um, that they kind of have a bit of a bonding moment and uh, form this kind of unexpected friendship. It's like going back to the 70s. Yeah. Um, it was it was it was wonderful. I haven't I haven't worked with him since I was 12, um, and so I finally got to talk to him as an adult, which was lovely. I could pretend I was smart and um, well read, and we could talk about politics and activism, and um, I guess he could see that he like made an impact on me. Um, you know, I think he was. He was, it was lovely to talk to him about doing theater. Um, you know, I've accomplished a lot in the 15 years, um, and so has he <laughs> in a different capacity. It was very charming to see him again, and he's exactly the same. He's very confident, very peaceful, um, very easygoing, um, you know, just very friendly with everybody. He's just got a, a real, really, um, sort of po powerful, quietly powerful presence on set. Um, and he did then, so it was nice to experience that again. I, to, to be honest, I, I think that there'd be so much good music. I, I, I would kind of live in, in the world of music. Um, Beatles and Led Zeppelin and a lot of 90s rock. I really like 90s rock, Alice in Chains. And... I would say um, it would I guess I would probably um, want to be caught up on episodes of The Golden Girls um, and maybe good TV from the 70s like Taxi, Welcome Back Cotter, Cheers. Mary Tyler Moore. Fight one another. Yeah. I think the cap would probably, un very unfortunately, well, I don't know, actually. I wouldn't say you'd necessarily... It, it would be win. a very evenly matched bout. 
you have the strength, but and you have the speed, but perhaps you're not as quick thinking in the fight. Maybe I would have a little bit more. Um, maybe I a little bit a fight with a little bit more wit, perhaps. Fight I would say. Dirty. I do fight dirty. Pull hair, scratch. Mm-hmm. Oh man! What would I do if I, I would have such a good? Scum. I'd have a good I'd, day. I would definitely. I'd have a good time. Uh, I would have a good time as well. Mm. I would. Um, what would I gosh, do? Gosh, I feel like you get away with so much. I see. I, I, what would I do? Um. What would I do? I might not leave the house. He'd just stay at home. <laughs> He'd shave his legs all day. All day. Some high heels, right? Yeah, it's That's his, right. It's his Finally. Finally! He finally put on a dress. <laughs> um, well, the last film that Chris did, he directed a film, which I'm, I'm desperately awaiting the cut of. I'm very excited to share. Um, so that was something that he was working on just like right after we did Cap, Cap 2. Um, and, and so, no, I haven't seen it. Yeah. But I'm Soon. Waiting. I'm waiting to. Um, and I saw her, and I, I don't know if it's the last one, but it's the last one. I that can't I, remember. I, I, we'll just call it her. Uh, yeah, I saw her, and it was fantastic. Um, that's more wrinkles. He has more facial hair. Um, I mean, it's so hard to say. Gosh, when we first met, he was, I don't know, 20, 8, 19, 20 years old. Um, you know, I think he's much more confident, obviously. I hope we both are. I can legally buy alcohol. He can buy alcohol now. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's you've experienced so many changes in 10 years, uh, especially those 10 years, you know, going through your 20s. And That's true. you experience love and loss. And, you know, um, I think you know yourself better. And so you probably are more comfortable um, to you know, taking risks, and I, I think I see that in Chris professionally, and then probably also just in his in his life, you know. Um, but he's always maintained a sincerity that I've been drawn to, and and kind of find to be um, very endearing. Um, so he's different, but he's still the same. you uh, have a Kumail in the, the Thor, the Dark World. So uh, did you with Tom to talk with this, this thing and uh, make some laughs? No, I, that, that was a very last minute thing. That was, I was, I was, we were in the middle of filming this movie and I, I kind of got a knock on my door from Kevin Feige and he said, listen, um, tomorrow, can you come by the other set and do this little cameo? It was very, very last minute. They, they just kind of threw me the pages and just said, this is what we need you to do. And I said, sure. 